Welcome to Lesson 2, Basic Photo Corrections. Um, this will give you some of the most commonly used features. Um, straightening an image that's crooked, cropping, compensating for uh, color casts, and retouching flaws. It's not just older photos that you um, can update to look more, um, you know, less aged with time. That's a whole different type of color correction. In this particular case, we'll be using the healing brush and um, cloning. I will show you very quickly Bridge, but I don't like to introduce a second program right when you're trying to get your bearings in a first one. So I'll explain in the audio for the PowerPoint a little bit more about Bridge. So I'll just very cursory um, intro. I've got the end photo open here in Photoshop already as you see this tab with the name. I'll minimize this really quickly. One way to do this is to say right click, open with, and say Photoshop. Another way while you're in Photoshop is to just say Command O for open or file open. Um, or you can drag and drop the icon and just navigate to that. You could drag and drop the icon, take the actual file, drag and drop that to your Photoshop icon that's in your dock, and then it will launch the photo. The one thing you can't do is double click because it's going to default to preview or whatever um, file because it's not a PSD. So this is defaulting to, um, this is defaulting to a preview or could open, um, depending if you're a Mac PC, it could open some other program. So don't, the only thing that's going to automatically open in Photoshop is a PSD, which is a Photoshop document, because it knows it has layers and it's what can read it. Um, the right click open with pretty much what I do. Um, but again, the, the th great thing about Adobe software is there's many ways to do many things. If you were to go find it in Bridge, you would just launch Bridge, go to your desktop, navigate. I'm in the Essentials view. So reset essentials. Um, go navigate to the folder that is holding the file that you're trying to open. And this just is an advanced window preview, basically, with m much more complicated metadata and whatnot that you can look into. But here would be your navigating through files. It's just another way through, through vid, uh, bridge, but at one step, you'd be able to see the photos, like at this step. Um, and I'm having some redraw. So there you can navigate and see, see the icons. But again, you can do that in another view on a Mac. You could do that in this view here as well. Um, it just gives you a little bit more power. Again, I'll, I'll expand on that in the PowerPoint audio. Um, so first things first, um, you have the exercise as it stands with their step-by-step -step directions. I will always go a little bit rogue, show you some of my best practices and the way I would approach it as if there was no book. Because basically the classroom in a book is a great set of training wheels to get you moving and navigating around. But at the end of the day, you know, every situation you're going to come across in an image is not going to necessarily have an answer in the book. So you'll just learn to have your instincts from um, from the exercises and, and getting your getting to know your way around. So first things first, we can see that there's a little uh, a fold or a bend. We're going to have to, I'm going command plus, command minus to go zooming in. If you look at this and then I'm pressing the space bar to get the little Mickey Mouse glove so I can move around and see. When you're zoomed in very close, you can see the flaws. There's some ink, maybe a scratch. The fo photo's been folded, you know, by the uh, attire. It's probably the 60s or 70s. Looks like they're in Venice at the Ponte Vecchio. 
Um, you can tell a lot about this photo if you zoom in and see. Right now I'm at command zero, which is fit to um, page. And if you look here in this lower left corner, it's demarcating what percentage you're at. So we're at 43, almost 43%. It's a 13 meg file. If you click this carrot, it will show you more information about the file and you can scroll through that if that's what you want to display. It, def it defaults to document sizes. Um, whenever you see a carrot, as I explained in the first demo, there's always more information and that applies to the panels, the toolbars, um, pretty much everywhere. So first things first, we're gonna see our rulers, which is command R. And just so we have a sense of the straight line. The crop tool, we're going to bring this in, get inside the color area of our image. So we have a white background or a pasteboard. Then we have the white matte frame of the photo. We want to get into the colored area so that when our shadow here, this opacity that covers the image, when we go to rotate and to line that up, we're going to use that as sort of our T-square or a triangle to rotate and get that to line up. So if you rotate this around, we're using the straight line edge of this to straighten to there. I'm working a little blind here if I could get rid of this. Get rid of this dock to the top there so we could see my menu bars. So we'll pull this down. And we're close. Okay. And so you see how I'm at the corner and there's a straight, there's a little grid to sort of help you straighten to things inside. So if you had a very straight horizontal line, this stone fence is could be the vanishing point. You could straighten it to that. If you, what's in the context of the photo is not straight. So that grid is to help you with that. So when my arrows go wider, you see how I'm going in and out and I'm constraining? If you hit shift, it'll constrain as to keep the ratio even. But if you go a little bit towards the hot spot on the corner, you get this rotation arrow. If you're watching, I'm just sort of pausing there right now. This rotation arrow is a curved arrow and that means that you can now spin at that point, but you have to get in there outside of, see how it goes from straight arrow to curved arrow. Now I can rotate there. And you see, I'll go extreme. Obviously this isn't what we want to do, but you see how I'm rotating. My cropped box is staying the same and I'm flipping what's inside the content. And that wasn't very helpful for my final outcome, but you see that. And again, there's multiple ways to approach everything in Adobe software. That's the beauty and the strength of it. Um, but this is be the approach. Now I'm going to hit return. And now we see that. Now the catch here is if you look at our end result, which in life you're not going to just have that end result. Um, it looks like they resed it down. This still is not a straight line because the another way you could do it is this. Okay, so it's command T for transform. Now I'm going to pull my arrows from the corner. As you could line up the inside grid, we will lose image area and crop it though. But I just want to show this as another, a different approach example. See my little tiny grid? I'm taking this line and I'm lining it up with the line of how this fence is built. But then we have to cut out image area that we wouldn't have. You have to lose a little bit. And once we crop those pixels out, those are not retrievable. A lot of our changes that we'll do over time, we'll, it's, we'll be able to turn on and off that layer. 
we'll be able to non-destructively change the image with masks or just working on a color correction layer. But in this case, once we crop this out, we'll save this, not overwrite the original, so we'll always have it. But when we do this, we are going to lose some image area. And that's going to be destructive in the sense that once we crop it out, it's gone. And again, why you would save this as a different name of something edited. Here we could probably expand. We don't want to crop in too close on this little boy here. So we might be able to clone in some of that space because it's an even pattern. These windows up here on this building with these columns, we don't want to have to add those back in. That's too complicated. But somewhere like the sky, we could easily add that in and clone it. This is a little tricky because we've got the lines down here, but let's just see how that works. So is this an improvement on this? Yes, that still looks lopsided. So that's a little bit nice. And we'll have to go in there and clone that. Okay. And I will do a part B because this is running a little bit long.